This year, in 2015, UCC celebrates the 200th birthday of George Boole. And while he is well known as the forefather of the information age, what is little known, however, is the fact that in his communications back home, in his letters, particularly to his mother and his sister Mary Ann, he gives us quite interesting detail about the food and dining cultures uh, of Ireland, but in particular of Cork City between 1849 and the 1850s. And what's particularly interesting about his observations is that when Boole comes to the city first in 1849, in October 1849, it's still in the middle, in the very sort of immediate post-famine years, the worst years of the famine between 1845 and 1847. And therefore, his observations about food are particularly important from a historical point of view and particularly interesting. In the early letters, he talks about the effects of the famine being all too obvious to see in Cork City and, in fact, in Ireland. Uh, he speaks about misery and poverty and destitution of the city and so on. But what's particularly interesting, I think, about Boole and his observations that come through in the letters is that he forms a very stark contrast between the effects of the famine and also the food and the dining cultures of the city elite. So, for example, he talks about um, the whole sort of social round of dinners that he is invited to and attending. In one of his letters in November 1849, for example, back home to his mother, he talks about uh, a social dinner where they celebrate and he's feeling particularly bad about the extravagance uh, of, of such a dinner and so on. But in between that, he also talks about a city that is, uh, has abundant food supplies. So food is varied, but it's also cheap. And in particular, what he speaks about is the cheapness of fish, like salmon and fowl. And he talks about the hospitality that he encounters from his landlady, for example, Mrs. O'Brien, where she presents to table things like roast goose, uh, bacon, beef all together, and at once together with cheese and butter and apple tarts. And Bool is quite clever because he also recognises the power of food in sort of forming alliances of friendship and also forming networks of influence. So the invitations to dinner from the city notables, in particular the wealthy businessmen and the bishops of Cork, for example, come hot and fast to him. He takes some of these up, but he also sort of stands back and thinks, these dinners are taking too much of my time. And in one letter, for example, he says he thinks it's much more civilised to go to tea because with tea, you can talk instead of eat and you can also think. In his letters to Mary Ann, he tells her about the various invitations he gets to dinner. But not only that, what he also does is he actually complains about the numbers of invitations uh, he's getting. Even when he's invited to tea and he turns the invitations down, they still send him cake and so on. So at some point, uh, he decides to kind of withdraw from the social circle to some extent, which is probably a good thing because it gave him time to think about and to produce his, in Cork, his seminal work, The Laws of Thought whose algebra and symbolic logic uh, pioneered a new form of maths, which was a cornerstone of the uh, digital age. George Boole's letters are in the care of the archive section of the special collections in the Boole Library in UCC. And they are very important, I suppose, in, in giving us a glimpse of the food and dining cultures in Cork uh, in the immediate post-famine years. However, the library also has another document, and that's an unpublished 19th century recipe book, which fills in and sort of complements what Boole has to say. And in this respect, this recipe book gives us an indication of the culinary culture of Cork in the city uh, between the 1820s and the late 1840s. This recipe book uh, was compiled or started by uh, a woman called Mary Hunner in the 1820s. And she was a wealthy woman, actually, who was associated with Kinsale in County Cork. Uh, her recipe book uh, contains close on 200 recipes and in fact it's sort of typical of, of the genre. Her recipe book is a handwritten one. It's one of many that the country has and one of collection that UCC has. So it is typical of the genre in that it contains not just culinary recipes but also medicinal recipes, uh, household tips and sort of recipes for cosmetic things like to prevent your hair falling out or recipes for cold cream and eau de cologne which is dated to 1842 and from Versailles. Over the years, uh, this type of document, I suppose, in many cases they've been sort of dismissed as um, 
inconsequential, random, even the playthings of women. However, I see them as being much more important because these documents are in fact multivalent. They sort of tell us things and they have meanings on very different levels and many levels. So for example in her collection of recipes she refers to what we might see as sort of typical uh, recipes of Irish kind of traditional food and Irish identity, things like Kulkanen, potato breads and so on. But her recipes for potatoes are much more extravagant in giving us things like recipes for potato cheesecakes, potato pancakes um, and potatoes a la maitre de hotel. Um, what's also interesting about them is that they sort of take heed of scientific and technological advances in the food industry, particularly in the 19th century. So one of these kind of icons of Irish food identity, soda bread, for example, and she has a recipe for this, uh, is made possible only because science has come to the kitchen in the creation of the chemical level, bread soda. So we find a, an early recipe for that in Mary Honer. The most prominent feature of this collection of recipes is the fact that they touch on and they're heavily influenced um, by British food ways and British culinary practices. For example, the most recipes she has in the collection are for sweet puddings, but also things like calves with jelly and so on. And these are very strong representatives in the canon of British culinary recipes. And not only that, but she also touches on sort of aspects of the empire with her recipes for curry. She has quite a lot of recipes for curry, four of them, for example, and also stuck into the back uh, a cutout piece for a commercial curry powder. Mary Honer's recipe book is much more than a collection of recipes because it touches on these topics of uh, commodity culture, commercialism, technological advance, and it questions for us how Irish food identity in the 19th century, in the middle of the worst of the fam famine years, was formed and shaped and so on. And in that respect, I think Mary Honer speaks to George Boole's letters in provoking us and tempting us to rethink Irish food and Irish food identity in the middle of the 19th century. So to celebrate the bicentenary of George Bull, we took one of Mary Honer's recipes and adapted it a little bit. Um, we took a recipe for college pudding and we renamed it George Bull's Sweet Puddings. <laughs>